Uh, congratulations to the TechPoint team, Wally and team for putting together and moving to, to get this to be a virtual event. Um, I'm very privileged to give the keynote today. Uh, today, what I would like to do is uh, share my thoughts on, um, on, 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 on a path to scale. Uh, maybe just by way of introduction, again, my name is Tayo Vyosu, and I am the founder and group CEO of Paga. Paga is a mobile payments company uh, here in Nigeria uh, with ambition to be an emerging markets payments company. We have now been around for the past 11 years, eight years commercially operational to the market. Um, and what I will share today um, are just really my, my experience um, in scaling this business to be a company of 500 people with employees in four different countries um, and my ambition to scale this and, and, a, and a customer base of about 16 million users um, and my ambition to take it further. And what are the key? Attained when I think about scaling um, a business. Uh, so this is uh, going to be a, a presentation around that, and then I'll use Paga specifically as a case study um, in that presentation. Um, and there are no questions today, but I just want to point your attention to um, a tech, another tech point opportunity next week uh, for Ask Me Anything session, um, and I'll be happy to answer any question you might have. You can always find me on Twitter at at Obiosu. Uh, so without further ado, I'll just really, really get in, 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 into the presentation um, itself. So first of all, before I get started, this is, you know, a lot of you on here are entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs or people working in companies. Um, and I thought it would be good for me to share my, my favorite definition of entrepreneurship. Um, and this is a definition that comes from the a professor at Stanford Business School called Irv Grosbeck. Um, Irv defines entrepreneurship as the pursuit of opportunity without regard for the resources currently controlled. I particularly love this definition because um, it really points to the fact that you can be entrepreneurial within a company or by setting up your own business. Um, and you know, so when we talk about entrepreneurship and when we talk about a path to scale, it is not just about you setting up your business and scaling your business, but within a business, how do you help that business scale? How do you become entrepreneurial within um, a business? And so this is one of the definitions that I really love, and I just thought to start, start here. Now, from my perspective, there are really five keys to scaling an entrepreneurial venture, right, and building a resilient business. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, so you need to be ready for that long haul journey. Um, and, I, and I fundamentally believe that in that journey, uh, it's very difficult to go alone in that journey. So it really is about going with people um, along the way. And so there are five key things. And the first of them is really seek to make change happen, right? Um, and I'll talk, I'll first I'll list the five and I'll talk about them going to each one of them. The second is team, 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 right? You are as good as the people on your team, as good as the people who work with you to go after your vision um, and the mission that you're, you're, you have. The third is really, you know, if you are a venture that is raising capital, your investors as partners on that journey. Um, and, and we'll talk about that as well. Product market fit, there is no business if there is no demand for the business and for what you're doing. Right. Um, so product market fit is really important. And then last but not the least, alignment of that team. How do you bring everybody together? And I'll share some of my lessons and some of my takeaways on what I'm I continually uh, I'm improving on about how do we align our team? How do we bring 500 people from different countries together towards one mission and one purpose? Um, so just to get right into it, when we talk about seeking to make change happen, um, Seth Godin says it best, I think, right? He says, look, um, you seek to make change happen. And if you are not, do something else, right? So why start a business or why start a product or a service um, that is not changing things, right? The, you know, I like to say it's the unreasonable person, right? That really seeks to make change happen, right? Um, it's a quote that I, that I heard once. Um, and and so if you're not seeking to make change happen, then go along with whatever we have today, 
and, and just stay with it, right? Um, and if you're seeking to make change happen, be clear on what change it is you are seeking to make happen and be succinct about it. And then you are able to share that vision with other people, right? Um, you are not going to make that change happen without having a team with you, right? Um, my, my favorite African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, right? Um, and I like to think about business like an elite sports team. For those of you that follow me on Twitter, you know I'm a huge Chelsea fan. So I like to think of it like the Chelsea team, right? Um, in each position, you bring the best people for that position, right? Your striker is not going to be your defender. Your defender is not going to be your midfield player, right? You bring the right people. You make sure people are in the positions of their strength, where they can, where they are really good and where they'll continue to improve themselves, right? To be really good at that particular role. And you bring this elite sports team together. Um, and this means many things. Right. Um, it means that the best player gets paid the most. Right. And it's very clear to everyone. So there are a number of sub things around the team that I also want to get get in, because as a leader, building and scaling your people is your number one responsibility. Right. And that is whether you are the founder and CEO, whether you are the manager, um, you know, your people. Um, Is your number one remedy, right? Um, and as Simon Sinek says, and the people that work for you, um, you get you get you get a lot more out of it. And so the first is really putting people into the right roles, right? Um, in the early days of a startup, um, you know, you really want to make sure that it is about dividing and conquering, um, and that people are in the right roles. I will not worry too much about titles. Over time the structure of titles and roles will become more, more relevant um, to you. Um, and be intentional about culture. Culture is how we do things here. Um, define it, write it down, share it um, with your people. Uh, define your values, right? This should not be abstract, but truly what the collective team want. Um, and, and, and make sure that these are things that, um, you are promoting and that you're living by, right? Um, and at the start of your, your business, you know, uh, probably a small group comes together to define what this is. Um, but ultimately it really is about the team coming together, living your values and being clear exactly about what it is. As an example, that Paga two years ago, we reviewed our values and what we stand for. Right. Um, and only for us to to make to realize that actually, um, you know, one of our values, or one of the things we listed as our values was not something that we that we actually live up to. So we removed it. Um, you know, measure climate, climate, unlike uh, culture, climate is how does it feel to work here? Right. It is one of the top determinants of success of a company in each team. The team lead has the biggest influence on how it feels to work in the company for anyone on the team, right? Um, and, and this is something that you can effectively monitor as well. So when it comes to the team, I think these are the most important things with the team, right? Um, and making sure that, um, you know, that everyone on your team is aligned towards, towards the goal. But first of all, bringing that team together, making sure you have the right culture, having the right values that you measure and promote, and then measuring your climate. For many businesses, you have to raise money on your journey. Um, it's not the case for every business, but in those, for those who do have to raise money, look at investors as partners on the journey, right? And as a relationship that you have to manage for the long term, it's a marriage, right? Um, and a marriage with multiple uh, partners on this journey, right? So the investors bring money, they bring knowledge, they bring networks to help you achieve the change that you're seeking to make happen, right? Um, do your diligence on them. It's a long-term relationship. 
how do they engage the portfolio companies? How do they engage on the board in good times, in bad times, through this COVID downturn? How do they engage? What is their perspective, right? How do they help outside of the board conversation? These are qu questions that you should ask other entrepreneurs who they have invested in. And you should try and tease out, right, how these investors are with their portfolios before you actually go into a relationship with them. But remember, they are investing in the team, not just in you and in the people around you as well. They're not doing you a favor and you're not doing them a favor, right? So expose them to the team always. Let them understand the people who are around you and how they're also doing. Um, treat your investors well, no matter the size of their check. Treat them well. Um, you know, in my case at Paga, one of my former investors was one of my first investors. Um, he invested a small check initially, but you know, he brought along with him um, my largest investor into my seed round and has introduced me to more significant opportunities than the money he invested. If I did not do good work for him when I worked for him, he would not have invested in my business. If I did not treat him well, he would not have introduced me to other people right, um, and be on the journey with me 11 years later, right? So it's really important how you treat people, um, it really matters. And then last but not least, with your investors, count on them as partners as you navigate the business. Every business will have its ups and downs. Bring the investors into the brainstorming, bring them into the thinking, right? Actively engage them. They want to help, that is why they are here with you. The more you do this, the more vested they will be in your success. Right. And the more they'll pour themselves into this business with you. Right. So investors are partners on this journey with you. Look, no matter the change you're trying to make, no matter how great your team is, no matter the investors you bring in, if you do not have product market fit, you're going nowhere. Right. So product market fit, as Mark Andresin says rightly, is about being in a good market with a product that satisfies the demand of that market. Right. So the market is where your, your products are sold. Right. Um, my wife recently talked about how in her business, she's looking at a new product and she she's designing a new product and she likes a specific, uh, you know, mix of this product. But in her taste test that she's doing with everyone, no one likes that one taste, one, one mix that she likes. Well, you know what? The market is speaking. So she's not going to sell the one that she likes. She's going to sell the one the market wants. Um, and this is really what product market fit is, right? Um, the market is super critical to your to the success of your venture, and I think it's as important as the team, right? Um, if there's a need for the product or service that you're, you're, that you're providing, which really means that the change you're looking to make is something that other people want to see, they will adopt it, right? Um, it's easier to scale a business where a market already has demand for the offering than to create demand. Now, this does not mean that you cannot create new categories. In fact, this is one of the things I'm most proud of at Paga is that we created a new category in Nigeria, right? Um, when I started this business and I told people what I was trying to, to do initially in 2009, people thought I was crazy, right? I was talking about a cashless world. There was no Bitcoin. There was nothing of the nature, right? So no, nobody, could, you know, very few people could really capture into what I was saying at the time. Right. Um, and now that has changed in just 11 years. People get it. People want to be part of it. People are signing up to use it. Right. So you can create a new category, but it is more difficult, um, regardless to say that. Right. Um, so it's not impossible to create new markets uh, where the demand was not there before. It is just more challenging to, to do so. Right. So the questions you have to ask are, are people demanding and buying your product or service? This is how you would know if you have product market fit. And you have to be honest with yourself. The proof is in the pudding, right? Um, you need, you might need to iterate because if you find that there's no product market fit, maybe you need to change things around, right? Uh, maybe you need to change the focus on the journey, right? Um, and still navigate your way around, around things. Um, last but not the least in terms of, you know, my key objectives here is like, how do you align your team? How do you make sure that everyone understands their, their job is important to the success and to the purpose that you're all going after, right? In the early days of any business, you can probably get everybody into one room, jointly develop the company strategy, 
and execution tactics and just go for it, right? Um, I recommend that you don't take a perspective that you as a leader have all the answers. Paint the vision, but allow others to lend their voice and creativity to what is going on. Document the outcomes, share it with people, share it with everyone so that people know what we had discussed, what we agreed, and they can always refer back to it. Now, look, this is something that I continue to improve on. Um, and I think you can just always, always continue to build on this. Now, as the business grows, you need to bring in greater structure, right? Um, you know, so everyone can, because everyone cannot be in the same room anymore, right? And it's now about communicating, communicating, and communicating and sharing with the team, what is the vision? Where are we going? How are we doing? What is the strategy? How did we do on that, right? And continuing to explain and share that with people. There are many ways to do this, um, but in my 11 years, there's some tools that I have come to lean on um, that help me um, on this journey. And here are some examples of them. Um, I don't think early stage startups should use objectives and key results, OKRs, it's very widely talked about. But as you mature as a business, I think it becomes valuable um, to make sure that multiple teams are aligned, right? I do a weekly check-in with everyone on my leadership team, right? I do quarterly reviews of our KPIs, monthly email to our team. I have a session on a monthly basis where you can ask me anything. Um, and, and then I do quarterly town halls. And I also ask that my leaders have monthly meetings with their teams to share the strategy, to share the vision, to share where we are and updates and have everybody aligned around the team. So these are the five things that I think are most critical um, you know, as you, as you build your business. Um, the goal is that everyone knows where we are headed, why we're headed there, right? Um, and, and that they know how their job fits into the company goals. Now, over the last 11 years, um, I've learned a lot uh, starting and scaling Paga to where it is today. Um, and we still have a long way to go. And I'm very excited about that journey. And we're learning and we continue to improve our business. Um, I thought just to take a moment to use Paga as a case study briefly. Um, I founded this business in April 2009. And we commercially launched to the public in August of 2012. Um, and, and today, you know, there are really two problems from the beginning that we're looking to solve. Um, one of those problems is eliminating the use of cash, right? Um, and the need to use cash. And the second problem is delivering access to financial services to the mass market. Both of these problems are problems that exist in countries all over the world, particularly in the emerging markets. Nigeria um, is no, no exception. 90% of transactions in, in emerging markets are done in cash. This is probably true across all of Africa. 1.7 billion people around the world are unbanked, billions more underbanked. Half of those people are in seven countries around the world, Nigeria being one of those countries. So these are the two problems that we set out to solve. The way we solve them is really by building an ecosystem that enables people to digitally send and receive money and access financial services. In every market, we take a partnership model, right? Partnering with banks, partnering with local financial services companies, we want you to be able to send money to anyone using their phone number or email, send money to their bank accounts, right? Easily pay for goods and services when you walk into a supermarket, when you go online to shop, right? Um, and do your transactions. You really buy stock, trade stock, access financial services, savings, loans, et cetera, all through our ecosystem that we're building, right? There are currently about 500 of us in the company uh, in four countries, and we're very driven by what we call our massive transformative purpose. And that is that we want to make it simple for a billion people to access and use money. Uh, Wale talked earlier about, you know, TechPoint really, you know, trying to build the tech ecosystem in Africa. Um, and the idea that technology built in Africa can be used around the world. And this is something that we're very excited about at Paga. Right, the Paga platform built here in, in Africa, in Ethiopia, in Nigeria, um, and now we're taking it to the world, right? And this is really something that we're very, very excited about at Paga. We are the leading mobile money operator in Nigeria. Today, um, you know, we have 16.3 million users on our platform. It took us three years to get to our first 3 million users. 
And in the next five years after that, we have added 13.3 million more users, right? And that is how, and that is a, you know, a clear definition of scale. And I'm incredibly proud of what our team has achieved in this period, building a whole new category, building a brand that, that is now recognized around the country. Um, we do about three and a half million transactions a month, over $200 million a month in transaction values growing at a very fast pace. And we estimate that we have created over 12,000 jobs in Nigeria alone. Um, and that is just through our agent network, men and women who are entrepreneurs in their communities around this country and creating jobs for more, more, more people. So what we have done from a technology perspective, and we have built this platform ourselves with our, our, you know, our own product and engineering teams, is we've built a world-class platform that um, allows for, that works on any mobile network, that works on any mobile phone, even the feature phone, you can access the services and allows for you to hold money in it, link your bank accounts, link your cards, transact offline and online, right? Um, and and really reaches the mass market. Um, you know, actually I was really happy to see Wale tweet recently about how his father in Ibadan uses, uses Paga, right? And that, that just really is why we exist, right? Is for all of us to be able to transact conveniently whether the money sits in our bank account or whether it sits in Paga, right? And we take a partnership model in doing so, right? And this chart here really just shows the growth and the scale that we have achieved, right? In eight years, we have processed 123 million transactions worth over 8 billion US dollars. And our growth is accelerating. And you can see how that acceleration is taking place and, and the hockey stick really, really coming into it. I know this is a, a lot of you on, on, on here are developers, are technologists. And so I really just wanna share the fact that we have opened up our platform to developers to innovate. And this is one of the things that really excites me um, is the fact that we are committed, right? To an open API that will drive the growth of what I call the next generation of startups in the ecosystem, right? Um, you know, you don't have to worry about payments. We have taken care of the regulatory side. We have taken care of building the, the KYC infrastructure. We have taken care of building the rails. And what we want to do with you is to change the world together, right? With your innovative solutions and our powerful APIs. Um, so please go to www.paga.dev. Um, and if you go there, you can see our APIs. We have Paga Connect which is if you can integrate Facebook to log in, you can integrate Paga Connect. It gives you one click payments in your app for you to be able to do your transactions. Paga Checkout is our online gateway. It accepts payments by cards, by Paga, by bank direct debits, and allows you to be able to, do, to, to access any of those within your application. And then we have our business APIs, which makes available every single transaction on Paga. You wanna send money to people, you wanna send money to bank accounts, do you want to pay bills? Do you want to buy or send airtime? And there are numerous use cases for this. And if you go to www.paga.dev, you can see all of this. So I encourage you to please engage with us there as well. And look, we're going to continue to scale our business in Nigeria, uh, but we're also now expanding to new markets and we're excited to take technology built in Africa to the world. We're launching in Mexico, which is the second largest economy in Latin America. Um, and we're very excited to go there, build a new team in Mexico but take the same platform and, and actually build out the platform from there as well. Um, and then also in Ethiopia, where we currently have about 60 to 80 staff in, in Ethiopia, right? It's the second largest population in Africa. Our platform has been built primarily there and we're super excited about the idea of launching our product in that market. Um, and we have a great affinity to it. But listen, scaling a business and the path to scale is not a straight line. Uh, my journey has not been a straight line. It has gone up and down, and you even saw it in our chart, right? Our, 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 our transaction chart also went up and down, right? But it takes focus, and it takes the dedication of a committed team of people to get there, right? So I really want to encourage you around that, right? It really takes focus and a dedicated team of people to get there. Um, look, I cannot end this presentation without talking about how we responded in a time of crisis with COVID-19. COVID-19 is an unprecedented, um, you know, once in a, in a generation um, kind of event to, to the world. And it really calls for transparency, for decisiveness, and for leadership. And so I just want to share some of what, what I did in this time. 
it was really important to me as we entered this situation that decisions that we made were team decisions. Um, I brought together my leadership team and we discussed how do we respond to the pandemic? How do we make sure our 500 people in four countries are safe? How do we make sure our agents are safe? How do we make sure our customers and we, and we share with our customers how to be safe? How do we do our part to flatten the curve? Um, and then how do we make sure our business continuity is clear? So we came and we decided on a very clear course of action and we communicated with our team. We over communicated with our investors and our board as well, transparent with them on the issues, on what we did not know. We didn't know how it would affect our business, right? What we knew is that the government of Nigeria had not declared financial services an essential service, which meant that our agent network would have to shut down, right? Um, so we had to come up with how do we think this would or would operate? How would we make it make it through? And in so doing, we communicated with the team. In the first two weeks, we had a town hall each week followed by emails to the team. We showed them the forecast, our re-forecast and the likely scenarios that could happen. Um, we did monthly town halls to show the actual numbers versus projected numbers, and then how we're doing and what we're gonna do on costs to get there. Um, you know, Our board and investors, we have had three formal board meetings um, with them, month, you know, engaging on WhatsApp, et cetera. You know, and so it really was, everybody rallying together and i was really proud to see how my team came together through this time how our leadership came together and how our agents also came together 80 percent of our agents remained active in q2 um you know and 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 that was just fantastic to see many of you many users started using paga we had 6x growth of new users in q2 over q1 Right. Um, and that was just amazing to see. And the transactions of people using it, we know that every single transaction is a story of someone that we have made life better for. So doing this has not been easy, but this has been what we've been able to do in this time period. Right. And in times of crisis, businesses need to innovate, look for new opportunities that they may have not prioritized before. Um, and we've all learned to work in this remote world. Right. Um, and to be where we are today. So just to close, um, I just want to recap again for you the five keys I see to scaling an entrepreneurial venture. First of all, just remember that you're not in a mar you're in a marathon and not a sprint. So you got to pace yourself as well and be ready for that long haul. So the five things really are seek to make change happen. Team, team, team. You're as good as your team, right? Your investors are partners on the journey with you. Make sure you have product market fit. If you don't, you might have to iterate. Right. But if the market is telling you that there's no demand for this, listen to the market um, and alignment of your team. It is so critical to align your team towards it. So thank you very much for 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 listening to this presentation. Um, thank you to TechPoint for hosting me and for having me here. Um, and I wish you the best for the next two days. And I'm looking forward to the winners of the competition as well tomorrow. Thank you very much. I thank you so much, Tayo. Uh, I we do appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's been interesting, and uh, we we really really thank you for coming through for this presentation. Absolutely, uh, we, it's my my pleasure. We won't be able to take questions for this, but we do appreciate you. Thank you. So, yeah. so thank you so much. We I myself enjoyed the conversation as well thank you thank you uh, oh, thanks awesome. a lot an amazing job you're doing and as i tweeted the last time my father is using it in the battle and we are all using it we enjoyed it thank you fantastic thank you so much and i uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the rest of the day thank you okay. thank you yeah so guys uh the, we are moving to the next session uh it's it's uh estate intel the winning pitch storm the journey so far by Dolapo Omidire, Omidire, CEO of Estate Intel, they were the one that won the $10,000 from TechPoint last year. Uh, if you go to click stage and you will see the next session, you will see the next session. Just join and let's have the conversation there. Let's see the next conversation. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to, to be dropping comment or question in discussion group. Or the discussion group, my team, they, they are there to answer your questions. I, I believe you are enjoying this question. See you on the next stage.